Hi everyone, it's Professor Clark, and in this lecture, we are going to learn more about Mikhail Afanasyevich Bulgakov. Mikhail Bulgakov was born in 1891 in Kiev. So like half the authors in our course, he was born in modern day Ukraine. And his father was a professor at the Kiev Theological College, while his mother was a teacher at a girls' school. So he grew up in an intellectual household and received an excellent education and would have been very uh, familiar with religious texts and received an excellent religious education, which is something to keep in mind while reading The Master and Margarita. He trained as a doctor at Kiev University and worked for a while as a doctor, first uh, in Ukraine and then in the Caucasus during World War I and the Civil War. And then he moved to Moscow in 1921 and worked as a doctor for a little while there, but started writing then and quickly turned to writing full time. He started writing and publishing short stories in the early 1920s. And this was when he wrote his first major novella, Heart of a Dog, Sobaci Sirce and also several plays. And in 1926, his play Days of the Turbines, which was based on the experiences of him and his family in Kiev during the Civil War, became a huge hit. And it was a personal favorite of Stalin's, uh, even though it was not pro-Soviet. And Bulgakov always had a difficult relationship with the Soviet regime. He was never particularly pro-Soviet and in fact, as we see in Master and Margarita, was quite critical of many aspects of the Soviet regime. However, he also didn't support the other factions who were trying to conquer Kiev while he was living there. And he more or less worked with the Soviet regime to the best of his abilities for most of his life. And his biggest hit in his lifetime was this Days of the Turbines. And uh, like I said, it was a huge hit with audiences in general and with Stalin in particular, which is interesting. He also began writing what would become The Master and Margarita in the late 1920s, probably around 1928. However, in the 1930s, he began having more and more political problems and more and more trouble getting his work published or performed. He became a director in the Theater of the Working Youth in 1930 and directed other people's works, but his own works came under increasingly harsh criticism and he struggled to get them published or performed, as I said, and he became a target of you know, vitriolic uh, personal attacks because of his supposed uh, political unreliableness. And the politically motivated attacks on the master in The Master and Margarita are based on his own personal experiences. The critics in the novel are loosely based on critics who actually attacked Bulgakov. And that whole aspect of the story is somewhat autobiographical. And his health really disintegrated under the pressure of the censorship and public criticism that he was receiving. He'd always had kidney problems, and they became much worse. And he had also gone through a period of morphine addiction in the 1920s when he was working as a doctor. He started using morphine again in the late 1930s to deal with the pain of his growing health problems. And traces of morphine have been found on the original manuscript pages of The Master and Margarita. So if you're wondering, like, why is this so crazy? One of the reasons why this novel is so crazy is that he was probably high on morphine as he was writing it in at least part of the time. And he passed away in 1940 from kidney failure without ever seeing The Master and Margarita published or having any hope of seeing it published anytime soon. And he begged Yelena Sergeyevna, his third wife, to preserve it. And she did. And we will learn more about its publication history in the next slide. So Bulgakov's uh, great work, the reason why he's considered to be such a major talent today, is The Master and Margarita. And he started working on it at approximately 1928 and continued working on it until his death. And he never created a 
you know, final definitive version, which is a little bit of a problem. We have something that is pretty close to a finished novel or a finished manuscript, but he was writing it for the drawer, as they say. He had no expectation of actually getting it published. He would read sections of it to his friends in private readings. So it was known to be, to exist that trustworthy people were allowed to hear excerpts of it or read excerpts of it. But he was working on it on and off throughout the last decade of his life with little expectation of actual publication. And so he never produced a completely finished manuscript of it. His third wife, Yelena Sergeyevna, uh, whose picture you can see in the top right there, preserved it and promised to try to get it published. And she kept the manuscript, retyped it, and finally managed to have it published in the Soviet Union in a kind of expurgated or abridged form in 1966. And even though it was abridged, it created a sensation as soon as it came out and became an instant classic and was later published in multiple languages around the world, and also uh, more complete versions of it were published. And so the version we're reading is a more complete version than the one that was originally published in 1966. Although, as I said, there's no like definitive canonical final version of the manuscript because he never produced that. However, it has become a classic of Russian literature and uh, there are now references to it all around Moscow. For example, there's a sign at Patriarch Ponds where the novel opens. You can see it in the bottom right of the slide. And it shows a picture of Voland and Karoviev and uh, Behemoth. And it says, it's forbidden to talk with strangers. And it's a reference to the opening scene in the novel. And there's all kinds of that kind of stuff around Moscow. Quotes from the novel have become famous and people go around saying things like manuscripts don't burn as a set phrase. And so again, like Karolina Pavlova, but more so Bulgakov unfortunately didn't live to see how people ended up receiving his major work, but his major work was received by later generations with, you know, tremendous joy and amazement and gladness and is now a beloved and canonical work. And so Bulgakov is now one of the most beloved authors in the Russophone world. Uh, you can see in the slide, the top left picture is a museum dedicated to him in Moscow. The top right is a plaque honoring him at a hospital he worked at in Ukraine. And so he's one of these many authors who, now that Ukraine and Russia are two different countries and, you know, at the time of recording are actually at war, and there's this big emphasis on saying that Ukrainian and Russian culture are very different and that they're separate, we have a really hard time classifying authors like Bulgakov, who was both. Uh, he was born and grew up in Ukraine, but lived most of his adult life in Moscow and wrote in Russian, but had this strong Ukrainian influence. And we can see this in many ways, but one of them is that he carried on the uh, so-called Dionysian tradition of Gogol and Dostoevsky in Russian literature. And this Dionysian tradition, which focuses on chaos, the subconscious, the dark side of human life, but also humor and subversion. This is a common trend in art, the world around, but is talked a lot about in Russian literature. And the father of this trend in Russian literature is considered to be Gogol, who, like Bulgakov, was born and raised in Ukraine, but then moved to what is now Russia later and wrote in Russian. And so is this sort of dual nationality author, if you want to say. And although not all Dionysian authors in the Russophone canon are of Ukrainian uh, birth. Dostoevsky, for example, was not. But it's noticeable that Ukrainian authors tend to swing much more towards the Dionysian side. And most of the Apollonian authors are what we might call Russian-Russian, like Tolstoy. So in any case, Bulgakov has become this beloved cult figure in the Russophone world, particularly because of The Master and Margarita, but also for his other works and was probably the most important 20th century example of this Dionysian trend in Russian literature. <laughs>